This video on the energy costs of reproduction will focus on the energy cost to females primarily. And if one were to consider an individual fetus developing, the majority of the energy which is going towards the fetal growth and afterwards fetal nutrition is obviously coming from the mother. The father's contribution to that individual fetus was rather small. That being said, however, men make hundreds of millions of sex cells per day every single day of their reproductive lives, which can last decades. As a result, if one were to add all of the energetic costs of sperm production day in, day out, decade after decade, at the end of a man's life, a man could very well have invested as much energy or more into the next generation. So the energy costs to males are more diffuse, not as concentrated in one individual pregnancy. That being said, the energy cost for female reproduction can be enormous. These first images are of a female lamprey, which can lay hundreds of thousands of eggs at a time, um, maybe only once in her life. This is an enormous cost. This is followed by images of a frog holding eggs, the eggs inside a female chicken, and one can observe the great amount of yolk uh, which obviously uh, was expensive to produce, given that yolk is primarily lipid. You can see the great masses of uh, wood frog eggs, uh, and although they were contributed by multiple females, uh, nevertheless, this is a great energy investment. And so much more so in those animals in which the females carry the young inside their bodies and nourish them there one can see that there is a great size increase in the uterus of a pregnant pig or a pregnant cow. And uh, the placenta is where much of uh, the nutrients that a woman has uh, ingested then pass to uh, the fetus and her body then expends energy uh, dispelling uh, the fetus's waste. After birth in mammals, the mammary glands, which give mammals their name, then provide carbohydrates, proteins, and fats uh, as the source of infant nutrition, perhaps for years. And so from the female point of view, reproduction uh, does require a great energy investment. Because of the energy requirements for pregnancy and for lactation, the adipose tissue of uh, the human body, especially that in females, sends the hormone leptin, which reaches the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is well aware of how much adipose has been stored in the body. And the hypothalamus then is the site where the gonadotropin releasing hormone is released to the pituitary, which then starts uh, the uh, production of FSH and LH and the initiation of menstrual cycles. And so thus in females, menarche, the first menstrual cycle, is tied to nutrition. The hypothalamus does not initiate puberty until adequate adipose reserves have been stored. In essence, if a girl does not have enough energy in her body to maintain herself, then becoming pregnant not only puts herself at, the ri at risk, but also the fetus will not develop to its full potential. And so therefore, as one asks, when does menarche begin? What is the age of the first menstrual cycle? It varies with nutritional content. Throughout history, the age of menarche has recently dropped because it is easier in the modern world for girls to gain adipose. Calories are very abundant in the modern diet. And so the average age of menarche has dropped from age 16, say in colonial America, to age 13 and less in modern America. In parts of the world where nutrition is scarce, menarche still occurs later. If a woman were to lose a great deal of weight at some point in her life, menstrual cycles could pause until that weight is regained. 
Obviously, there are consequences to this beyond the purely biological reproductive consequences of being capable of having an offspring. Obviously, there is more to being a parent of a human child than just the biology of it. There is an emotional responsibility, a financial responsibility. And as girls at younger and younger ages become capable of and typically interested in reproduction, this then uh, means that our society will have to face the reality of mothers of younger ages and then also find ways of limiting what our society views as adult activities uh, to children uh, which may be uh, capable uh, of uh, reproduction at earlier ages.